My name's April, and I just wanted to say that your dress is so cute, it's bonks. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 TV roles that were written for actors. I know you think you're complimenting me, but calling them doodles is an insult. You a big fan of Picasso's doodles? For this list, we'll be looking at TV roles that were either invented for certain actors or roles written with certain actors in mind. Did we forget a role written for a particular actor? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Ike Barinholtz as Morgan Tookers, The Mindy Project. Barinholtz originally joined The Mindy Project on staff as a writer. But you all deserve to know the truth. But knowing that he also wanted to continue acting while writing, Mindy Kaling offered to try and find a place for him on the cast. Have I ever told you the story about these glasses? Yeah, got them at the Salvation, Salvation Army. Army. They were I'm throwing throw them out. And I swooped in and said, not on my watch. Apparently, Kaling was so impressed with Baron Holtz after one week in the writer's room that he didn't even need to audition. She wrote him into the second episode of the show as Morgan Tukers. Morgan, why do we want to be a nurse here? This job? I could take it or leave it. I think the attitude of I could take it or leave it is something you're supposed to project, not actually articulate. Okay, busted. And it didn't take long before he grew into a fan favorite character. Can you even imagine the Mindy Project without Morgan? We're glad we never have to. You write down some way of getting in touch with you and I will find you. Okay. I will find you and I will kill you. It's from Taken, it's from Taken. Number nine, Liza Weil as Paris Geller, Gilmore Girls. Wouldn't it be amazing if we could just get one Burmese political prisoner released because of our petition? You're thinking small, Geller, let's get them all out. It's unthinkable to imagine Gilmore Girls without one of its best characters, Paris Geller. But believe it or not, this character wasn't originally part of the show. You know, it's interesting how you think you know someone. Right side card lunge. <laughs> Trust a person, rely on a person, and you turn around one day and realize you've been hacked. Liza Weil actually first auditioned to play Rory. We came here to do spring break, and we are going to do spring break. Well, what else do you suggest we do? <laughs> Thankfully for all of us hardcore Paris fans, she didn't get the part. But the show's creator, Amy Sherman Palladino, wasn't done with her yet. Too stiff. Do I need to relax my lips a little, maybe open my mouth more, make it more inviting? She created the role of Paris specifically for a while to be a part of the show. And what would Gilmore Girls be without Rory's arch nemesis turned best friend? She is hands down one of the best characters on the show. If you were to disappear from the face of the earth tomorrow, the only person that would miss you is your Porsche dealer. You wanna chime in here? No, I think Paris has got it covered. Number eight. Phyllis Smith as Phyllis Lappin, The Office. The Office is well known for its hilarious ensemble cast, but not every member of the Dunder Mifflin family was a part of that initial ensemble. Office relationships are never a good idea, so let's just try to avoid them. But um, if you already have one, you should disclose it to HR. All relationships, uh, even a one night stand. Phyllis Lappin, later Phyllis Vance after she marries Bob Vance, Vance Refrigeration, was written into the show just for Phyllis Smith. Bob Vance bought this perfume for me in Metropolitan Orlando. It's made from real pine. Who's Bob Vance? You have a lot to learn about this town, sweetie. Smith was actually working with the casting director before she joined the cast herself. I know you keep saying it's your space even though there's no assigned parking, but I keep forgetting. Yes, that's the problem. I guess so. Okay, well, I'll settle then. I don't like you. The story goes, she was reading lines opposite the actors who came into audition, and the producers loved her so much that they decided to give her her very own character on the show. What else do people like? I wonder what people like about me. Probably my jugs. Number seven, Norman Reedus as Daryl Dixon. The Walking Dead. Was well, everything gotta be a competition with you? Oh, take it easy, little brother. Hardcore fans of the original zombie apocalypse comic books all know that Reedus's character, Daryl Dixon, does not appear in the source material, but rather was invented solely for the TV series. Man, I went back for you. You weren't there. I didn't cut off your hand neither. You did that. Reedus was auditioning for the role of Merle Dixon, another character created for the show, when the show's producers decided that Merle needed a brother. I may be the one walking away. You're the one that's leaving. Again. Daryl was a fan favorite character from the very beginning. In fact, fans loved this character so much that there was even a massive outcry for the comic book creator, Robert Kirkman, to write him into the books. Got no meds in your bag. What's this? He didn't but we can see why so many wanted him to. The walkie wasn't charged. Bullshit. 
It's a solar walkie. You didn't think to check it. Not my fault the radio's a piece of shit. Number six, Aubrey Plaza as April Ludgate, Parks and Recreation. April Ludgate is easily one of the best characters on Parks and Recreation, and considered a huge part of the show's success. Well, believe it or not, she was not originally a character in the show. You get snacks, I'll bring music. We'll jam out to some sweet tunage. You know what? This is awesome! Actually, no, I don't want to go anymore. Oh. Okay. Just kidding, see you in 10 minutes. Her existence is owed to Aubrey Plaza. Apparently, her audition was so odd that it compelled the creators to create a role for Plaza just so she could bring the same energy to the show. I guess I kind of hate most things, but I never really seem to hate you. Though Plaza previously had some success in stand-up and improv, she was actually experiencing a lot of rejection from acting roles before Parks and Rec. You need to get me in there, like, that's a must, must, must. She's the worst person I've ever met. I want to travel the world with her. Thankfully, show creator Michael Schur recognized her unique genius. Captain Picard couldn't help but note the smile that crept over his mechanical but lifelike face. I'm gonna murder you. I understand. Just one sec. Number five, Terry Crews as Terry Jeffords, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. This is a unique one, because this time it was the show's creators that impressed the actor, not the other way around. Dan Gore and Michael Schur wrote the role of Terry Jeffords with Terry Crews in mind. He had um, dark curly hair and a neck tattoo. Wait, 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 slow down. Uh, let's start with the eyes. Were they desperate? Lonely? But Cruz was already looking at possibly participating in several other shows at the time. But when he received a personal call from the creators, Cruz enjoyed the fact that they had specifically named the character after him and jumped on board. I gave him back all his swag, except for the puppy vest, which I uh, lost. <laughs> Imagine what would have happened if Cruz said no. What other actor could have possibly played a better Terry than Terry? Just give me two minutes alone with him. I'll let him know what's gonna happen to him if he doesn't cooperate. I'm gonna miss the birth of my child! It's a magical moment! And he's not the only member of the 99 to have a role tailor made. Gina was invented just for Chelsea Peretti. I have time for 15 more compliments. Number four, Maud Apatow as Lexi Howard, Euphoria. Many of the actors on this list got their roles by performing so well during their auditions for other characters that the show's creators wrote in entirely new roles just for them. Hey, Peru. Hey, I, um, I need a favor. In this case, however, Maud Apatow didn't even have to audition to get the role of Lexi. Lexi Howard. Hi. How you doing? Good. As showrunner Sam Levinson himself said, the role was always hers. They had previously worked together on the Sundance hit film Assassination Nation, and when Levinson was casting for Euphoria, he already knew that Maud was the perfect Lexi. How do you decide who you want to hook up with? I don't know if they usually just come here. Suffice to say, he was right. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I love your Lex. Number three, David Hyde Pierce as Niles Crane, Frasier. Did you know that Frasier wasn't originally supposed to have a brother? Oh, certainly not. If you were a fan of the show Cheers, you know that the Frasier character claimed to be an only child. In a nutshell, yes. And when he got his own spin-off, that's how things were meant to stay. This is strange, I gotta tell you. See, I didn't, I didn't know he had a brother. At least until the show's casting director discovered a picture of David Hyde Pierce. He thought that Pierce and Frasier actor Kelsey Grammer looked so much alike that it was decided that Frasier would now have a brother. I bet he said something. It's just that when Frasier gets going, you kind of have to tune him out. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good slogan for his radio show. Dr. Frasier Crane, when he gets going, you have to tune him out. That's right, Pierce got the role off of just his photo. Maris and I rented the video. I don't mind telling you we pushed our beds together that night. Number two, Chris Colfer as Kurt Hummel, Glee. We all owe Chris Colfer a big thank you for being the reason Kurt Hummel even exists. Don't worry, gentlemen, I have this one under control. When he first auditioned for the show, he had his eye on playing Artie. Though he wasn't quite right for that role, creator Ryan Murphy decided he still needed this kid in his musical dramedy. These steps are not hard. I've been doing them since preschool. I'm sorry, did I miss the election for Queen because I didn't vote for you? Colfer had mentioned during his first audition that he once played Kurt in a production of The Sound of Music, and 
thus, history was made. Murphy requested Colfer come back and audition for a new role named Kurt. Hello, I'm Kurt Hummel and I'll be singing Mr. Cellophane. Only after Colfer blew him away again, did Murphy tell him that the role was invented just for him. You want a piece of the Fury? The Fury? That's what I named my fist. Well, with that level of creativity, you could easily become assistant manager at a rendering plant. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, David Schwimmer as Ross Geller. Friends. So, uh, where were we? Similar to the Terry Crews situation, the show's creators had to fight for Schwimmer to take on the role of Ross Geller. Uh, what, what, <laughs> what are you talking about? It creators Marta Kaufman and David Crane had written Ross with David Schwimmer in mind, but by the time that they got around to casting Friends, Schwimmer had decided to only act in theatre from then on. He was done doing TV shows after a particularly bad experience. You threw my sandwich away. My sandwich! According to Crane and Kaufman, they practically had to beg him to come on board. Thankfully, Schwimmer eventually agreed, because he was the perfect Ross. Good thing they didn't have to pivot to someone else. Pivot! <laughs> pivot! Shut up! Shut up! Shut up! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.